So what do we have here today, boys and girls? We have the SH Fig UARTS 1989 Michael Keaton Batman action figure. Those of you who like the whole barcode thing, there's one right there on the front, and <laughs> there's one right there on the back. They're just making sure they got all their barcode bases covered. Taking it out of the box, we can see another box which has Batman artwork and photographs of the figure on the one side. On the back of the box, we can actually see the figure in this little tiny window. He really looks like he's in some kind of a prison, along with these small images of Batman in various poses with some of the accessories he comes with. Top looks like this, the left looks like that, and the right is exactly the same. And then the bottom of the box actually looks like this. Cool beans. Now let's get him out of there. Yoinking him out. Dude, aw. Oh, well that, that oh. I should have known I was gonna pull him out backwards. He was facing the window, stupid Brad. Anything in the inside here? Oh, look at that. There is something else on the inside. Tamashi Nations. We got a little Foldy pamphlet as well that shows how to use all of his accessories. And then of course we have the figure. Let me just take this bad boy out and then we'll continue on. And here is everything that we got on the inside splayed out in front of us. Nine interchangeable hands, his batarang, his bat grapple, his line launcher, two shuriken, and the little handily things that go inside of his really big, thick, heavy cape. And then, of course, we have the figure, which, if I'm being honest, I like it. It's really good, but not great. And I'll get into that over the course of the video. I'll make sure you understand why I think the way I think about this guy. Doing a slow toe to head on this guy, you'll find that they've got about 95% of the details right with this guy. And where they chose to make certain parts of his suit glossy and other parts matte black, I think is a nice little touch there. And overall, I think the body proportions are not perfect, but but pretty good. If I'm being honest, I do feel like his head might be just a little bit too big for the body, which would be the first thing I'm not too keen on with this figure. Here's what Batman's face looks like close up. The sculpt of the face is is good. The cowl, the way that the big bat ears stick up, the shaping, it looks really nice for what it is. What I don't like is how the eyes have been painted. I'm not sure where it's gone wrong. Maybe it's the dot matrix painting that they've used or, or something. It, they just don't look quite right. The emblem on Batman's chest is painted pretty darn nice for how small it is and they did get the correct emblem on there. It's the emblem that appeared only in the first movie. After that they went to a more traditional style bat. The muscle tone for the body armor actually looks pretty accurate to the movie too so they get good marks for that as well as Batman's utility belt. Batman's utility belt looks pretty darn close to the movie as well. It would be kind of nice if there was some kind of a slot in the back for him to stick his grapple gun. But while we're looking back here, you can see the body armor for Batman's back and also his backside. Everything looks, you know, pretty accurate to the movie. Batman's gauntlet looks pretty accurate to the movie too, with the rectangle with the two lines down it, the lines down his glove right here, the three spiked scallops. Everything looks like it should. And they've even included the right definition right here for the body armor on his bicep. Getting down to Batman's boots, they do have most of the detail correctly placed with the three lines on his shin guards right there and the detail of his Nike shoe actually looks like a Nike shoe. They've also included the tread that's on the bottom of his boots which is a nice touch. Again that looks <laughs> like a Nike shoe. And overall for this piece I do think they got the details very very correct. Now one of the things I don't like about this figure is the cape. I don't like the look and the texture of the inside of this fake leather cape. It's a really really thick fake leather fabric and while I do like the luminosity of it, how the light bounces off it and the fact that it does look accurate to the movie in its leather properties and they have put stitch lines all down the back of the cape it's just so thick that that putting it over his shoulders is oh, it's just a nightmare it really just doesn't work that way like it's so difficult and then when it, if you do manage to get it to stay over his shoulders it just it looks so huge and also as you're watching now <laughs> it doesn't want to stay over his shoulders He's spreading his wings and flying. So basically, this cape has got to go. Also, I forgot to mention that the cape makes Batman very top-heavy, so it's hard to stand him up. But while we have the cape out, we have to mention the fact that you can put those rods right up in the cape like this. And this actually is kind of a, an interesting way of tackling Batman being able to hold his cape out like this. Rather than going with a wired cape, they went with the whole, we're going to stick something right here down the edge and he can just grab onto it and hold onto it like he's, you know, flying a glider or something like that. It works. I mean, it doesn't look the greatest, but, you know, it's definitely doable. 
Now, before we get into the articulation segment, I would like to swap out the heads as well and put this alternate head on Batman's shoulders, which is achieved by off with his head. You can see under here how it connects to the body. The cape has that little plastic doohickey. You got a little hole there for the bat symbol and the peg right here in the top. That's because the bat symbol just comes right out. You then pop the bat symbol right there in the little hole. You then pop this little neck piece that goes inside of the Batman head in question. That's really friggin' creepy looking. Slide the other head down on top of that there post and plug in the bat emblem right into that hole in his chest. And there you have it. New head achieved. And if I'm being honest, I really don't like this one. It's kind of off-putting that his eyes are looking off to one side. That's just weird. Why do we need that? And let's not forget that Batman's mouth actually comes off and you can replace it with a different lower half of his face. Oh, that doesn't look right. Hold on. Get in there. Oh! <laughs> It's stuck to my finger. And there we have it. Ta-da! Hang on, I'm gonna not use this head. I just really don't want it on there for the rest of the video. I really don't like the eyes. And while we're here, just for those of you who don't want to keep this cape on this figure either, you'll notice that it's held together with this little plastic piece in the front and another one out here in the back. Little holes like that hold the cape on. And now he doesn't have a cape on at all. We'll just slide it back on the creepy neck peg, put the emblem on there, and I'll actually, oh no, he lost his face again. That's something I figure I should mention. <laughs> Batman lose. Ah, oh, it fell off again. Let's see if just a light tap will make it fall off. Oh, look at that. Okay, that's gonna be a thing. Anywho, I figured I would keep it off. That way we could do the articulation without that big cape getting in the way. So Batman's head has very little... His face fell off. So Batman's head has very, very little articulation. They're really... I mean, ah, oh, jeez. No articulation. Okay, moving on. In the shoulders, Batman's got these little ball hinges. There's also a butterfly hinge in there as well, and that definitely adds to the articulation. He's got the just over 90 degrees single jointed elbows that leave this weird thing hanging out. They do rotate, so there's, there's something there. You got a rounded hinge inside the wrist for this Batman figure. It's okay, it does the job. However, it's incredibly noticeable. Oh, his face fell off again. Batman also has presumably not only a ball joint up in the chest here, but also in the, his face fell off. The waist is not so useful. It's, it's okay, it, it adds to it, for sure, but really most of that articulation and range of motion is gonna come from the torso up here. I think the reason why the waist ball joint isn't that useful is because it's just, like it's, it's really flat, right? So how could it, you know, it just, it just uh, isn't very get back on there useful, get back on there. His face fell off again. I'm sure there's a joke in here somewhere about some mama way back in the day going, do that again and I will smack your face off. From the legs down, Batman's got the ball joints in the groin. There are also drop hinges, which is actually really cool. I like it when they do drop hinges and there is a bit of rotation, but I've just pulled his leg off. There's quite a lot of crunchy articulation in those knees too. Totally looks like he's popping a squat in the woods. And there's no roundabout articulation though, just the up and down knee articulation. And he's got the ball joints in the ankles there. At least I think they're ball joints. Can I pop it off and have a look? Yep, that's a ball joint. And finally, he's got toe articulation to boot. Oh, his, his face fell off again. That's it, I am so over this. You are getting super glued. In you go, and in you shall stay. Try to fall out now, will ya? <laughs> Now for the comparative portion of the video, as in size and scale, here he is next to the DC Multiverse Val Kilmer Batman from Batman Forever. And on the other side, we have him next to the NECA Batman, only this has been a complete redone head. A friend over at 112 Custom, you can find him on Instagram, painted this head, popped it on over to me in the mail. I know the symbol on this guy is not accurate for being an 89 Keaton Batman, but it's a Batman Returns head sculpt. But I like this one better on the body overall, and I'm aware that it's a mashup. And next we have him between two of my favorite Batman figures, the original Toy Biz 89 Keaton Batman, and then also the Kenner Dark Knight Collection Batman, all in black, which was clearly meant to emanate Michael Keaton as well. All right, so now that we've made it all the way to the end and we've covered the packaging, the figure, the accessories, the articulation, the comparisons, what do I think about this guy? Do I feel like he is worthwhile, or should you just leave him on the shelf and wait for the Mezco 112th Collective version to come out? Or perhaps just be happy with the NECA 89 Batman? Honestly, I would say wait, bide your time, and see what the Mezco 112th Collective one looks like. I got a feeling that one's gonna be light years better than this one. And that's not to try to be insulting to SH Figure Arts Bandai for this figure. I think that it is definitely, to date, the best 89 Batman figure that's been released. That being said, 
The cape kind of stinks. The eyes on both head sculpts look really funny. The faces want to fall out of the cowl. You saw it over and over and over again, and I cut out a bunch of them too. And he is kind of a little bit of a weird scale. But for the accessory count that you get with this guy, it is definitely a solid attempt at SH Figure Arts to give us something very cool in the 89 Batman. And the overall sculpt of the figure for the body looks fantastic. I would give this figure a 7.5 out of 10 and say if you're someone who wants to collect all of the Batman figures from the 89 movie, then you're going to want to pick this guy up. But as I said, if you're waiting for one that is going to be the 89 Batman figure that's in the 6 inch scale, you might want to wait for the Mezco 112th Collective. Anyway, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Hopefully you found this review to be a useful, helpful, fun waste of time for the day. If you did, you could leave me a like, that way I know I've done something right. Leave any comments you have down in the comment section below, and I will see you with the next one. Have a DC day, everybody, and take care.